And now we gain life. We blast them. Don't mind if I do, Hugh. Don't mind if I do. Let's keep this man. Copy the spell. And I gain life. I hit you. Resolve. Oh my god, it feels so good. So good. You know what feels better than that? <laughs> A triple ultimatum. Let's gain life. Deal some damage to Kroxa. <laughs> Uh-oh. I did something. You guys are in for a treat today. Thanks again for watching Hello Good Game. Today we have a four-colored uh, wolf-style deck cycling through ultimatums. We have both the Inspired Ultimatum and the Genesis Ultimatum that we will be comboing from one to the other. Obviously, they'll help us draw the next one and we can just, you know, chain these off which is absolutely incredible. The rest of the deck revolves around ramping, you know, collecting as much available mana to use on your turns as possible. And of course we have Lutri, the spell chaser within the deck, allowing us to copy a target instant or sorcery when it enters the battlefield. Obviously we're copying our ultimatums. So, you know, the way I look at it, we have an unlimited amount of ultimatums in the deck. A couple other things that we can focus on before we get into the specifics is the Seagate Restoration. You know, not only is this a very good card to utilize all of your mana on, but you can copy it also with Lutri, much like the ultimatums, uh, you know, just to fill your hand, draw more ultimatums, and then you have no maximum hand size as well for later on, because we're gonna need a third and fourth hand to hold all of our cards here. Uh, you guys will see it's an amazing time. So with that out of the way, uh, let's break down how we're gonna accomplish those things. It starts out with four copies of the Gilded Goose, a 0-2 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, create a food token. Uh, you know, we can pay two and tap to sacrifice the food token, gaining three life. So there's some survivability here, as well as utilizing it uh, through mana ramp, because we can also tap the goose, sacrifice a food to add one mana of any color. And we can also, you know, create more food as the game goes on with the goose by paying two and tapping it, uh, which is pretty cool. So you can do that on your opponent's end step to create a food, immediately the gas, the gas, the goose, which is gas, untaps uh, on your upkeep there. So, you know, the Gilded Goose is great for many reasons, survivability, a blocker, and mana ramp so you know it fills three out of like the five boxes that we go for it's too bad it doesn't remove something when it enters the battlefield as well right so moving on to our two drops one of the key cards in the deck is kinan bonder prodigy a 2-2 and whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana add one mana of any type that that permanent produced so you know all of our mana ramp within the deck is creature based uh, mana dorks if you will they're all tapping to add mana and then when kinan's in play they'll all tap to add that plus one more which is pretty cool we can also sink our available mana into kinan uh, for seven which is a little expensive but you can do this at instant speed anytime you want which is really really cool Looking at the top five cards of your library, you may put a non-human creature card from among them into the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. You know, there's no nukes in here to play um, like uh, Elder Gargaroth, right? But you can still put some really cool things in play like uh, the Fabro Elder, more mana ramp, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. The Tangled Florahedron is cool because, you know, it can come in as the land if we need it early on, or we can play it ideally on turn two or fill the void because it's very cheap and we're going to have lots of available mana so we can sneak this in basically whenever uh you know to just act as a little bit more mana ramp it taps for one kin ends in play it taps for two and it's a chump blocker not that bad the elysian cartrid now i don't typically chump block with this i will chump block with the florhedron uh, ahead of time because it holds less internal value uh, it's still tapping for one mana here, but if we control four creatures, which we will 100% of the time almost, we'll tap for two mana, Kinez and play it taps for three. Um, so you can see the value difference there uh, between the Keratrid and the Florhedron. But again, the Florhedron kind of gets a little bit of a boost in value off of board in your hand because it can be used, like I said, as that land into our three drops. We've got four copies of Lutri the Spell Chaser. Now we talked about this copying an instant or sorcery. It's a three, two, and when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, copy instant or sorcery spell you control, but you may choose new targets for the copy. So, you know, this is kind of a bummer. At uh, one point I was looking to dig for uh, a Lutri 
with Kinan, that was the uh, ideal line of play, but you're not casting it, so it doesn't get to copy. Uh, RTFC, HGG, come on. But, you know, it's still a really cool uh, ability to be able to ramp uh, more efficiently with Kinan uh, than you normally would. But, uh, you know, do take note in that, that you can't instant speed for seven, pull your spell chaser out for three, and then cast uh, an ultimatum, right? Like, it's uh, it won't work that way. You would have had to cast your ultimatum first, then uh, for seven, and then another seven goes into the prodigy, and... Uh, then you're playing Lutri for free, um, which is possible. We have 14 mana available to us, but like I said, it's that text line that says if you cast it um, and you're not casting it with the Bonder, you're just playing it um, from the library. So a bit of a bummer there, but uh, like I said, no big deal. This is just a card you want to have in hand. Uh, and, you know, like I said, you're playing it on top of your ultimatums, on top of your Seagate. The Fabro Elder, this is going to get the job done uh, exceedingly well. It is a uh, zero zero with vigilance, getting plus one plus one for each color among permanents you control. We color, we have typically two colors, three with Lutri in play, and we get to tap it to add one mana for each color that we have. So typically we're tapping it for two mana, three if the Bonder's in play, uh, you know, three if Lutri's in play, four if they're both in play. So you know, it's a pretty big uh, mana sink here. And the cool thing about it, it, it has vigilance, so we can attack and then tap it for mana, uh, which is really really cool. Uh, we talked about the Seagate a little bit. Draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand, plus one, and then no maximum hand size. That's awesome. You can pay three life to have the land come in untapped if you want as well, um, because we might, might want to play a Kinan on turn two and not have an island, and you know that's going to help us get the job done here. The same goes with the Symbiosis. Um, you know, sorcery speed. Look at the top seven. Pull a creature, mana three or less. Put three plus one plus one counters on it, which you know all of our creatures are converted mana three or less. You're basically just grabbing a body, uh, grabbing anything you want. Late game, this is better than a land. Um, and early game, you know, you can pay three life to play a Gilded Goose with it if you need. And then we get into the bread and butter here. Uh, Genesis Ultimatum times four. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards from among them into the battlefield. The rest in your hand and exile it i know we're not playing terror we're not playing ugin who cares we've seen that done so many times um genesis ultimatum its main goal typically floods the field with more mana allows us to start casting two and three spells per turn it can also draw the inspired ultimatum to our hand which is really really cool um and then you know you may put any number of those in play you can put the rest in your hand so when lutri comes up in that scenario put lutri into your hand don't put it in play keep it in your hand or later put all of your mana dummies put all of your land in play keep lutri in your hand and then of course the uh inspired ultimatum and the restoration and symbiosis will automatically go to your hand because they're instances of sorceries and then because we ramped right now we have inspired ultimatum we grabbed a uh, lutri into our hand we can cast the ultimatum put lutri on over top uh you know have that resolve with the five cards that get drawn, we have a chance to draw another Lutri so we can recopy it. And, uh, you know, we can just string these inspired ultimatums together, which is a lot of fun. And dealing five damage to uh, any target, target player gains five life, and then target player also draws five cards. Uh, or sorry, you draw five cards, so it's always going to be us. Um, and again, you copy this once for 10 damage. That's pretty crazy. Copy it three times for 15, stop it. Um, and that's all available uh, many, many times within one turn, which is really, really cool. Um, so our Genesis ultimatums just build off each other and, uh, you know, should help us close out the game if we can survive that long. Now, that's going to be the key component. We do have two Fatal Passages, four Branch Loft Pathways, four Needle Verge Pathways, or Crage Crown Pathways, four River Glide Pathways, uh, four surmounted, three islands, and a plane. So very hefty land total here as far as the rares go within the pathways. But uh, you know, to make some of these four color jack decks work, you have to go in deep to the card pool, uh, get all those wild cards out and flowing. So that's the deck list. You guys kind of picked up on the general strategy while we broke it down. If you found any value and you want to support the channel, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps and share the channel to a friend. Uh, down below there's a little share copy the link send that out to all of your buddies and uh, check us out we've got giveaways in the discord free cash price tournaments lots more going on that you guys can check out thank you for all of your time and attention i really appreciate it i know you're going to enjoy today's gameplay footage and we'll be back to wrap up with our final thoughts so don't go anywhere we go first keeping seven this is a pretty janky hand We need a planes. Ah, no. A 
adds our planes into our elder. Rakdos, huh? Brody. Take our planes. You notice we fixed our land. Just for you. Yeah, they're in play. You know, I don't think it's worth spending both for that. Uh, you know, it does replace itself, but if there's any removal, we're screwed then. Scry one, we might have to discard. I guess the Florhedron can go. Archerid is of higher value. The shade, I actually don't mind that. Get another elder in play. Uh, this can't block, so we can attack with our elder. It has vigilance. And then we can throw our air trade in. And I still don't think this is worth it. So let's just end our turn. I'd rather the mana of any color. The Elder is of high value, but when you look at it, it doesn't seem good. Right? You're like, well, what is this card about? They might be like, well, the goose is better, right? But very awkward. Very, very awkward. All right. Zombie land. That's okay. We're going to top deck some fire and go wild about it. That's their turn. Should be their turn. Might have a shock. No way. Acclaim the Firstborn. And then they can tap it for mana, sack itself after the attack. That's pretty smooth play, I'll admit. If they use our Elder for mana here, I'm going to be choked. Woof. Yeah, we're just going to take it on the chin. No blocks. Oh, they are going for it. Three mana, instant speed. What are they using it on? They will lose the mana as the attack phase ends. They're going to remove our other elder. Interesting. Okay, so there's an eliminate on the other. And we're getting hit for six. That's a pretty good play. This is pretty good play too. Big money, big money, big money, big money. That's everything we need. And we draw our next ultimatum, right? Uh, this is of much higher value on the field as both a chump blocker and a double mana tap from Kinan. So as long as there's no discard here, we're happy. Uh, chances are there is. Uh, you know, Crooks is going to slam in our face and it's just going to be more of the same where we get beat down. <laughs> right? Let us wild out. Just let us do it.
We're gonna have to start recording our uh, jank decks against Sparky, you guys. Mythic's too difficult. I'm <laughs> just kidding. That's what we're here to do. Record janked up decks within Mythic for you guys. You know, add competitive decks as well. I'll be the first to say that this is a jank variant, uh, though. <laughs> By all means. No blocks. They get the zombie. Let's grab a planes here. Uh, we're getting life. We're dealing damage to a zombie. And we draw. Uh, we will also attack with our vigilance. Thank you. And we will play in, I guess, right? More vigilance. And our Caratrid. And now we just need to top deck some more ultimatums. The field's all clogged up. Like, this is pretty gross. It's not a good scenario for them. We have like a 15% chance of drawing an ultimatum. I guess we can just toss our goose. Keep from losing life. Do they have another land? No, calls the dead. So the Kroxa is actually going to be pretty gross for us, but... Let's do our best here. Top deck. <laughs> You know, I think we can take the trade. Just replacing itself. Do we keep these to discard? Probably. Let's take this zombie out. They have to trade. How do you not trade with that? Right? Is that scry that important to you? It's definitely a trade you'd make. And we've outvalued um, this deck relatively easy, other than the fact they've got so much replayability through Kroxa. But, um, yeah, typically this is one of the top tier decks that you can't beat, right? And we're playing Jank against it. <laughs> Look at all these mana dorks. And you're able to play a lot of mana dorks right now, I think, because when's the last time you've seen Shatter the Sky? It's just an uh, extinction event. Which is good, but it's going to take two of them. Even one's good enough, let's be honest. So we're going to lose some life here because we have to toss a land. I like the uh, mountain art better. <laughs> oh. So let's tap it. And then at least we get the mana. They also untap it when they take it, but you know, now we've got the, the availability of that two extra mana. <laughs> Which is great for them, like, you know, to grab a 4-4 four four that you can attack with and uh you know do general shenanigans with is real good we can start making food and gaining life uh this way killing the zombie taking the four damage i guess right Yeah. Oh! Oh! Don't shoot there. Could they have instant speed? Interesting. 
All right, so they lose the mana. They could have kept it and tapped it here to utilize. So I'm not sure what that was about. And let's make a food here. And let's eat these food that <laughs> that's going to save us from next turn. Urgh. Frustrating, to say the least. End our turn. Come on. We got an 8.6% chance on one and also another 86 on the other. You know, 5.7 on the Seagate. I think we're going to take more Seagates because we have plenty of mana and we're needing to draw. Keeping that lucky mountain. Maybe not so lucky after we've seen last turn. <sighs> Shoot! Man, this hurts. Let's eat these up. Let's eat these up. Still taking a chunk, you know what I mean? Can we survive long enough to top deck? Come on. Come on. Are they gonna sack it? Uh oh. We're gonna gain five life. I wish we could kill this thing. It only deals five damage though, not six. Let's kill that. Shade. And we get the draw. Okay, interesting. One, two, three mana available. We go to four. No attacks, and turn. We've got life gain, they're top decking. We can copy a Seagate. Right? That's a big draw. Can we survive and get more ultimatums and then start rolling out though? That's gonna be the question. We're tossing, tossing a Seagate. One, two, three mana. I can't do it. I can't sack the goose. Let's create our food here. I think we get to go. We're at 15 life. Oh, they just sack it in on us. Sploosh. Big damage. Do they have another in hand to play for two? Stop it! That's so good. Wow. We might have to go in full control for this. Oh, whoa, 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 Zed. That's not the side I wanted to cast. Are you serious? Why can you not Zed out of this yet? Anyways, uh, we were just about to 
Do some shenanigans. God damn it! That is the most annoying thing that's ever happened to me. We could have had that game. We could have won this game with that massive draw. Oh man, that's so frustrating. Alright, there's no way we can fuck this up. <laughs> Could you imagine if we got to copy the last spell as well as this spell? <clears throat> I think 10 damage to them. Lord knows they deserve it. We gain enough life to set off anything they've got. Land in play. Heritage in play. No attacks. We're still going to win this game. We toss the unneeded things. We've got an ultimatum to copy again with Lutri. You learn from your lessons. Don't concede. Keep pushing through. And, uh, you know, hopefully you don't make them next time and it'll get even easier than it is now, right? Just keep doing your best. The shades. They think the shades are going to save them. They think the shades are going to save them. Uh, we can discard this symbiosis. No blocks, take the damage. Who cares? Who cares, man? And now we gain life, we blast them. Don't mind if I do, Hugh. Don't mind if I do. Let's keep this man. Copy the spell. And I gain life. I hit you. Resolve. Oh my god, it feels so good. So good. You know it feels better than that? <laughs> I triple ultimatum. Let's gain life. Deal some damage to Kroxa. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's satisfying. Mwah. Perfecto. So this looks pretty slow. Lots of ramp, which is nice. Probably play one of these as the land. On turn three. Death touch is kind of annoying, but you know, minor. Aria, uh oh. We 
we can actually toss one of these in, which I think is a good play right here. Right, because the goose is tapping one mana here, but this can tap for two. Uh, also pushing our other cartridge up to two. And then we can play this one as well. But, uh, you know, we need more payoff spells. And I think I'm going to incorporate some more draw. The Blight Fang. Awesome. Um, we should probably just kill this thing, right? Screw it. Let's leave it. Yo. We can create a food token here. So much mana ramp. Field wipe would get us, but you know, we've been lucky enough so far. Just being silly about it. Right? Couple of goofballs. I guess we do need to kill Arya. They actually get a decent amount of damage here from the Blight Fang. Let's take the Knight out. All right, so we do get our draw. We're pretty far behind though. Another chump blocker, I guess. Uh-oh. Another death touch in play. I think we're just dead here on attack, basically. Right? Everything does so much damage here. Let's toss our chump blocker in. And we're still getting hit for another uh, chunk. Well, we need to gain life. We need to kill that Light Fang, but they're going to play another one. You know what I mean? We need to draw off this. Um, you know, we're still super dead, but you can see how now that we've got things flowing, we would be able to get away with more shenanigans. Doing ultimatums into ultimatums because they should just draw each other. But, you know, it does come down to surviving a little bit. <laughs> I mean, seven life's not bad, but, uh, you know, it's not good either. Oh, more death touch. So much of it. Down to five. Uh, they deal one, two damage by default, plus they have three attacks. So, you know, that's a thing. And even here, we're just dead. Just dead. 
So we lose our Elder, which was like our whole play last turn. Not quite. It's thinner library. Uh, you know, we could get that draw that we need, but they're just going to kill us with this Blight Fang. So there's literally nothing we're doing here. It's just Still a match somehow. Let's take that draw. Um, you know, four cards up to seven. There they are, hiding from us. Let's give a good game. You know, I still think that there's some value here. Um, in best of one, your opponent's typically running a lot of targeted removal. There's not so much field wipes right now. Uh, it does exist, but. You know, I think this is a really fun way uh, to potentially while out on your opponent. And, you know, just having fun with new things is uh, the main component here. <laughs> this is not the worst, but it's like really awkward, and I think we have to toss it. We can keep this. The planes. Let's... Let's toss something. I guess the passage can go. That way we can goose uh, Florhadron, Bonder. We just need to find, uh, again, a payoff spell, right? Other than that first match, the only thing we want to do is cast a loot tree before our ultimatum, right? It's nice and cheap for three. Allows us to copy an ultimatum. Uh, you know, two ultimatums for 10. I think that's, you know, relatively good. Did they buff this thing up? They do have that, uh, you know, plus four, plus four, whatever. Let's take it easy. Right, that way we can play our bonder, and then both of these will tap for two to give us four. And, um, you know, we can at least sneak our paratrade out, and anything else if we get it. Just giving them the life gain. Alright, cleric, up to 24. So again, plenty of mana here. Um, we got one, two, three, four, um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven mana for next turn. So, you know, is mass manipulation still legal? <laughs> Let's tap this for food. Oh no, we don't have enough mana in turn. Sorry. Um, and this is kind of sad, but at the end of the day, let's uh, thin our library first. We can grab our red source. Oh, no, the silence here. <laughs> and uh, we will maybe actually instant speed that on them. Right? I think that's probably better. That's actually one of the key components about the Prodigy, is um, you can activate that ability whenever. Alright, let's see what we get. So 
So, you know, we could kill it, but I don't know if we want to. Right? They're going up to 27, regardless of what we do. Oh, it's angel time. I think we just need more ultimatums in the deck. You know what I mean? <laughs> or like a aggressive draw, maybe more of the um the Seagates. Hey, old river! So do we have enough mana? And I don't think we do. Again, because I wanna use this for seven, pull a loot tree for free, and then ultimatum for seven, but I don't think we have fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, we do. Let me see if it'll work. No, Lou Tree. Shit. Next turn. We're going to get it. And that actually took the mana because we needed that uh, that tap for anything. But the second goose will really help that. I mean, it's not good. We really need to copy this ultimatum a billion times. Oh, you bastard. More ramp, which is actually more than, well, it's the same amount actually, but it's fine. We're gonna get hit here for eight, potentially, uh, maybe more. Not about the damage, it's about the mana. <laughs> uh, four, eight, nine, 10, 11. 12 damage. Meh. Meh. Don't stare me. Right? <laughs> sure. Let's see if we can pull this out. <laughs> I guess we could run field wipes as well. So if it gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana, I think we have to try for it, but um, that's five. Six, seven, right? We don't get it. And then, why isn't that allowing... Interesting. We're messing our mana math up here, and uh, that's making me really sad. Oh well. You know, the amount of mana that we have is a little ridiculous. We need more loot trees. We just cannot get one. You see how easy it is to flood the field with mana, though. We need more ultimatums, apparently. What if we wiped the field and then ran um, the ultimatum that brings everything back? Right? That could be better. Maybe a, a more suitable strategy. Right, we could tap all of our mana, wipe the field, and then just uh, replay everything. No blocks, good game. Um, you know, there's there's something here, and we're gonna continue working with it.
All right, we're going to record all of our matches here. If we can get it to work, we'll take it to Mythic. This is as jank as I can ever be. This is going to be a Plains here, and uh, that'll help us get our Elder in. It's going to be awkward, but I think there's some hope here between this 2-drop Bonder and 3-drop Elder. Um, you know, we are going to fake out the island here. Could be some shenanigans. We do have two bonders, and the goose is really easy to sneak in. So if they slay our bonder, next turn we can bonder and goose. Um, if we draw the another uh, forest there, that is, but... Let's get after it. Take our elder in play. You know, typically not something they're used to seeing, I don't think. Flash 2 blocker? I don't think so. No, we get the hit. Perfect. Cultivate and play. Don't really care too much about that. That's kind of similar to what we want to do. Okay, so let's take our attack and then we're going to tap this for mana. I don't think it matters much. Let's play this as a creature. Let's play this as a creature. The goose is a creature, and then the riverside is a land. Let's get that red source in play. So, uh, we've got some mana available. <laughs> Can we pick up a, p a payoff spell? You know, we do have a few of them here. There's eight ultimatums uh, total, and that's going to be pretty cool. If we don't get anything, we can sink all of our mana into our Bonder Prodigy. If they wipe our field, we can cry. <laughs> Migration path, interesting. I bet they're interested in what we're doing. So we have a ton of mana thanks to our Bonder Prodigy. Oh! So we can take a non-human uh, and put it right into play. How much mana can we get here? Let's hit with our elders first. And the prodigy can hit. I'm interested. Oh, we can just delete them. Actually, let's zed this. Okay, so we have... Um, Another four mana on top of six ten. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. I think. Uh, let's just set out of all this. Can we not do that? No. Shit. We're locked in here. Okay, this sucks. Let's just go for it, I guess. Yeah, let's just end the game. <sighs> I want to go big, right? <laughs> Um, target player gains five life. That's us. Then let's hit them for damage. And then the man is really easy because the prodigy. We get the drive, draw, we get the kill. That's a mythic player as well, uh, which is really, really cool. And um, I wanted to do both the bonder prodigy for seven um, and that, but you know, you can only get so much. Oh. My. Wolf. <laughs> this deck is sick. Um, you know, it's flimsy. Any removal sucks. Shatter the sky sucks. Like, any field wipe is devastating, obviously, because all of our mana ramp is in creatures. Um, and we're utilizing Kinan, the Bonder Prodigy, to really, um, get ahead on that and, you know, have 14 available mana a turn, which is pretty disgusting. 
Um, and then it just comes down to Lutri the Spell Chaser doubling down on the ultimatums, which is more value than your typical player can ever come back against. Unless, you know, your back's against the wall, you've got one life, and, you know, they've got a shock spell in hand. Um, there's no way to come back against a copied ultimatum. Um, that's absolutely disgusting. Especially the inspired ultimatum. Uh, the ability to gain 10 and sometimes even 15 life a turn is uh, a little bit off-putting to the deck who's been trying their hardest just to get you down to zero and is now top decking. So uh, a really cool deck, a really fun deck, and uh, I'm sure a very original deck for you guys that you've not seen anywhere else. So I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you want more content like this. And uh, you know, hit up our links. We're using our assistant today. Uh, that's available for free. That's in the download links in the Overwolf uh, below in the description. Check that out. You know, that's free to everybody on Windows. It's going to help you improve at the game. And, you know, everything else that we have to offer is in the link tree link. So, again, thank you for your time and attention. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Again, I'm sure you can do those things twice, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, of course, share the channel to your friend and support financially if you can afford to do so on Twitch, Patreon, YouTube, and our Amazon link. Thank you so much. Exclusive content weekly for our YouTube members. So get in on that. And we'll see you soon with another video. Oh,